astigmatism it's a type of error of refraction in which rays coming from a point will focus in a line and not a dot stigmatism can be regular or irregular i'm going to start by the first type here we have a spherical surface and a toric surface in case of a spherical surface the curvature of all the meridia is the same rays getting through such a surface will be refracted to the same degree in any of the meridia on the other hand toric surface the curvature in one meridia differs from the other one so the refraction differs in the different meridia in this example the horizontal has a power similar to that of the vertical so all the rays whether they get into the horizontal or the vertical or in between will come to the same focus if this focus is in front of the retina then this is myopia if it's behind the retina this is hypermetropia in case of toric surface horizontal has strong power vertical has weaker power so the focus is different and the meridia in between will focus in between the two so the end result the rays will focus in a line this is the case with the regular astigmatism so to have a regular astigmatism we have two meridia perpendicular to each other with gradual change of power as we go from the strongest to the weakest meridia another example of spherical surface and toric surface spherical surface will result in myopia or hypermetropia while toric surface will result in regular astigmatism If the cornea is toric, notice have we have the red dots vertical, so this is the vertical meridia, the yellow dots are horizontal. So at the bundle of rays passing through the cornea, the horizontal gradually the yellow dots will come close to each other while the vertical are still away till this bundle will now be focused in the vertical line as race passes the yellow will start to be away again and the red is getting close till we reach to this point where both the vertical and the horizontal are of equal length then we have a circle then as we pass more the horizontal the yellow are getting wider while the red the vertical getting closer more closer for the red and wider for the yellow till the end we reach to a line a horizontal line Then as rays passes more, start again to be more diffuse.
So as you notice here, the bundle starts by being oval vertical and gradually compressed to be a vertical line, then start to spread again to reach a circle, then start to be compressed, but this time in, in the vertical way. So we reach up to this level when we have a horizontal line. So here we have a vertical line, and here we have a horizontal line, and in between we have a circle. The one, first one is called the antifocal line, the second one is the second focal line, and the circle is the circle of the least confusion. The distance between the focal lines is known as the conoid of Sturm. So again, horizontal, focus at one point, vertical, focus in a sec another point, and gradually we have all these, first focal line, second focal line, and in the middle we have the circle of least diffusion or circle of least confusion. This is a cone. If we compress it, it will be like that. If you follow it more further, it will be very narrow to reach to a line. This is the idea. Now, back to the eye, vertical is a strong in this example, so focus will be in the vitreous, this meridia is myopic. Horizontal, focus on the retina, this meridia is emetropic. And in between that meridia obliques will be focused here. So this is the focus, the first one the vertical and the horizontal here. This is what we call simple myopic astigmatism. So simple astigmatism means one of the two meridia is on the retina, the other one can be on the myopic side or the hypermetropic side. Compound astigmatism means both meridia are on the myopic side or in the hypermetropic side. Mix it Astigmatism means one of the meridia on the myopic side and the second on the hypermetropic side. So this is the relation. Simple myopic astigmatism, simple hypermetropic astigmatism, one of the meridia on the retina. Compound myopic astigmatism, compound hypermetropic astigmatism, both meridia are on the myopic side or on the hypermetropic side. And mixed astigmatism, one meridia myop, second meridia hypermetrope. Here, this is an example of compound astigmatism. Rays horizontally focused here, rays getting vertically focused here, so this is the focus. <coughs> If we apply spherical lens, spherical lens will push everything back, all the meridia to the same degree. Now we manage to have the horizontal on the retina, so we change this situation into simple myopic astigmatism. More power, we have now one meridia on myopic side, other on the hypermetropic side. This is mixed astigmatism. More myopia push, myopic lenses pushing everything back. Now we have one meridia retina, one meridia hypermetrope. This is simple hypermetropic astigmatism. And lastly, everything is back. This is compound astigmatism. How is the image seen by the patients? In this situation, everything is blurred on the retina because 
upon reaching to the retina spots are very diffused. Now, if we focus one of the meridia on the retina, the other still the vertical is still not focused, so dots will appear elongated like this. An image will be elongated in such a way. This is when the circle of least confusion on the retina. The shape is regular but blurred. On reaching to the compound on the simple hypermetropic side, the shift of the image is on the horizontal. The horizontal is diffused now and the vertical is narrow, so the image will be elongated horizontally. Sometimes we have a situation when the vertical is more curved, more strong, so we'll be focused on the retina. We call this astigmatism with the rule. Other times we have the horizontal more curved, more stronger, and then it and the other is weaker. We call this astigmatism against the rule. This is just a terminology. It has no specific uh, uh, meaning. Regular astigmatism not always vertical and horizontal. It can be oblique in any of the meridians. Theology of astigmatism can come from corneal background or lens. Uh, lens like in lenticonus or in subluxated lens, there will be a tilt of the lens. Cornea like congenital cases, cratconus or following surgeries. <laughs> Patient with astigmatism, if the amount of astigmatism is large, he will suffer from distorted image. If the amount of astigmatism is small, he will suffer from eye strain. Imagine we have a patient with a vertical hypermetropia, one diopter, and horizontal emetro. So he will try to do accommodation to correct the vertical. In such a way, accommodation is effective in 360 degrees. So the vertical will be corrected while in doing accommodation, the horizontal will be on the myopic side. So again, the patient is not happy. He will relax the accommodation. So back to the first situation, he doesn't see well, so he will do accommodation again. This continuous effort of doing and relaxing accommodation will end in eye strain. Patient will squeeze the eye to see better, but again, this will induce eye strain. How to diagnose astigmatism? We can diagnose it if we present the patient astigmatic dial or astigmatic fan. This is the shape of the fan. This is the dial. We ask the patient, does the whole meridia, the lines appear clear the same, or some of the lines are clear while others are blurred? If this is the case, then this patient is astigmatic. We ask the patient, check if there is blackest and sharpest line. If he tells us, yes, we have a sharp black line compared to the rest, then this is the meridia of the astigmatic. How is that? Suppose we have horizontal meridia emetrope, so rays will be on the retina, and the vertical is myop with minus one, so rays vertically will be focused inside the vitreous. So if a person look at a dot, the dot will appear on the retina elongated vertically. Suppose the patient is looking at a cross. Everything is elongated vertically. So the horizontal line will be like this. And the vertical dots will be like this. Everything is expanded in a vertical direction. The end result, the horizontal line will be blurred, while the vertical line will be sharp. As you notice, dots are superimposed vertically when it is expanded, so it is sharp, while those on the horizontal line, as the expansion is vertically, the dots occupies larger area and are blurred. So as you notice, 
the astigmatic meridia is the one that will appear sharper and darker. To correct such a person, we are going to use a cylinder. The axis of this cylinder is perpendicular to the astigmatic meridia, perpendicular to the clear, sharp line the patient saw. At the end, we will tell you that the cylindrical lens is effective 90 degrees to its axis. Again, we can detect astigmatism using the stenopic slit. If we fog the patient, so we avoid accommodation, then we start, say we fog him with plus three. Then we apply the slit in front of him, and gradually we start to rotate it ask the patient when he will see clear. Suppose he choose that he get a clear image when the lens, the slit was vertical. No, now we know that this meridia is corrected by three. Now we turn the slit 90 degrees, add more lenses till he can see clear. Imagine by adding plus two, he say that it's clear now. Now we know that our patient has an astigmatism of two diopters. Retinoscopy. If we find that the neutral position in the one meridia and the perpendicular meridia are not equal, then we know the difference is the amount of astigmatism. Keratoscopy or placido disc. This is the instrument. We apply it close to the cornea and see these rings on the surface of the cornea. If the cornea is regular, then the rings will, around, will be regular. But if the surface is stigmatic, then the rings will be oval. The short meridia is more curved, more powerful. The long meridia, the elongated meridia is the weaker meridia. So in this example, we have steep meridia here, flat meridia there. This is an example of a, a normal eye, no astigmatism. Here we have astigmatism with the rule. Here we have a regular astigmatism. This is against the rule astigmatism. Again, normal cornea. Against the rule astigmatism, irregular astigmatism. With corneal topography, we can say that one meridia is more curved than the other, then this is the case of astigmatism. When do we correct the astigmatism? If we need to correct the patient if he complains of distorted image or if he complains of symptoms of eye strain. If neither of these present, then we can leave the astigmatism uncorrected. To correct that astigmatism, we need, we need to use a special lenses, cylindrical lens. We have a plus cylinder lens or a minus cylinder lens. This is the cylinder, this is the axis of the cylinder. As you can see, Along the axis, it's a flat surface, so we can cut a lens like that. This is an example of a minus cylindrical lens. Along the axis, rays getting through the lens along the axis will pass undeviated because this is a flat surface, it's not curved. While rays getting perpendicular to the axis, this is a curved surface, so focus will come to a focus. So as you notice here, rays in one meridia are not affected, rays on the other meridia are affected, and gradually we have change of power between the zero and the strong meridia. This is the case of a minus lens. 
Okay. The word transposition, when a lens is changed from one shape to another, optically equivalent, we call this transposition of the lens. So here we have all these lenses with the power of three, with different shapes. We can say we make transposition from one uh, lens to the other. Here we have two lenses, two surfaces, plus one half, plus one and half. Net result plus three. Here we have one surface zero, one surface plus three. Net result three. Here we have surface minus one and half, another one plus four and half. This is again net result three. Minus six plus nine, net result three. So if we write it this way or that way, we call this change is transposition of the lens. Suppose we have a patient when doing him a uh, refraction and we add the distance uh, minus one and if there's accommodation we add another minus one as we usually do in case of retinoscopy and the final outcome is horizontal meridia myope with two vertical meridia hypermetrope with two so we have a strong meridia here and a weak meridia there to correct this patient, if we apply sphere plus two, sphere will add power to everything. The 360 degrees will get power. So this one will be zero, and this one will be more stronger. It will be minus four. To correct this minus four, we have to apply cylinder axis vertical to correct the horizontal or we can start by minus two sphere minus two sphere this is a minus lens is going to weaken everything be behind it so this is strong meridia will be corrected i'm going to weaken it so it will be zero and this hypermetro will already weak will be more weak by two so it will result in to be plus four so to correct we need to use a cylinder plus four power axis may 180 so we can write the correction like this all like this both are the same they have the same effect in this example we have one meridia minus three, the second meridia plus three. So if you put a sphere, it will affect all the meridia. This is a strong meridia. This is the lens that is going to weaken everything. So the, this will be zero. This is already weak with three and weaken it by another three so now it is a weak by six hypermetropia six so to correct this we need to use a cylinder of a power plus six we put its axis on this direction so it would has it is a fact 90 degrees to the axis to correct this one or we can use the reverse we can use a sphere plus three going to correct this but I'm going to add more power to this one then we need to use a cylinder power minus six to weaken this strong meridia to the zero so both ways can be written and both ways are equal but we usually choose this form we want the cylinder of the right eye and the left eye to be of the same sign we don't want them of a different sign it has no special effect at all on the eye but simply because of the optician when doing the carrying on to have the glasses ready he may mistake the sign so we prefer to do the cylinder sign to be of the same sign so that the optician when doing the glasses will not uh, mistake the signs so we 
we make transposition of either right or left eye simply to get the cylinder on the each side of the same sign. The value of this transposition it has no effect on the image formed on the retina at all. So either we have a cylinder 90 degrees plus cylinder 90 degrees or a minus cylinder 100 degrees, both are the same for the eye. On looking to a square, it will be like that. If we use different cylinders, can be like this. If we use same cylinder, it can be like this. But in both cases, the brain can make the, uh, uh, the fusion of the two images and it will not suffer anything. The only thing, we don't want the optician to mistake the reading. So again, this is an example. We can give the patient just cylinder plus two, uh, sorry, minus two axis 90. Or we can put a sphere of minus two to correct this one, and this one will be plus two. Then I'm going to add cylinder plus two axis 90. So these two are the same. Simply we change one form to up the second, and we know we call this simple transposition. When applying this for glasses, the glasses are formed of an of, uh, anterior and posterior surface. When it is raw before adding any power, we have the anterior and posterior curvature the same. This is the same vertically and horizontally. This is, suppose we have just uh, myopia or hypermetropia, we change the curvature equally in all the meridian. But in case of astigmatism, we use spherical cylindrical lens. As you notice here, the curvature of the anterior surface and the posterior surface horizontally it looks parallel, but vertically, the back surface looks more curved than the anterior surface. So the power horizontally is different from the power so, on building a spherocylindrical lens, the cylinder, if it's minus cylinder, we put it on the back surface. If it's a plus cylinder, we put it on the front surface. So, back to this example. We check the sign of the cylinder. If we choose to use the minus cylinder, then we're going to make this surface, the curvature, changes, we build the cylinder on the back surface. If it's a plus, we build the curvature, change of the curvature on the front surface. So this is the base curve, and this is the cylinder in each of the meridia. This is the base curve, and this is the cylinder in the horizontal and the vertical. So the cylinder can be placed on either the back or the front surface. The back surface is used when we are using a minus cylinder. The plus is used when we are using a, a, the front is used when we are using a plus cylinder. We prefer to, when we are fabricating the lens, to put a minus cylinder on the back. This will decrease the meridional magnification. So all the time we try to build the minus on the back. We use a minus cylinder to build it in the back. And this is the idea of making transposition. So we can write the same thing on this form or that form, but we prefer to have the cylinder on the minus. So if it was like this, we need to change it to the other form, and this is known as the toric transposition. So simple transposition is the one we use when we are writing the prescription to avoid the optician to be mistaken when doing the glasses. 
Correct transposition is the one we are writing here. Simply, we want to always write a minus cylinder on the back surface. In case of irregular astigmatism, we don't have the conditions we described in the regular type. We can, may have one meridia of one power, next one of another stronger, third one weaker, then stronger, then weaker, then stronger, any abnormal uh, arrangement. Etiology can be a faint opacity in the cornea. In advanced cases of cratconus, in advanced cases of lenticonus, mainly patient will complain of eye strain or distorted. On doing retinoscopy, rays passing in the peripheral part of the pupil will appear divergent, while those in the central part will appear convergent. So in doing retinoscopy, we may see scissoring of the red reflex, where central part move in one direction while peripheral part moving in the other direction, or the red reflex will appear to be spinning. In doing keratoscopy, you can see the mires are totally distorted. You, you don't have an exact oval shape like we have in the regular astigmatism. Treatment of, uh, of uh, irregular astigmatism can be done by using hard contact lens. Once we put a contact lens on the cornea, it will cancel the cornea. We are using hard contact lens to keep its shape and wouldn't follow the irregularity in the cornea. Thank you for your attention.